Live from WSLS, this is 10 News at 6, working for you. Tonight, the world is waiting for war as Vice President Kamala Harris says the possibility is real. We'll explain the next steps for our country. Plus, have you started a small business or do you need some help starting one? The city of Roanoke is here to serve you. Tonight, we'll introduce you to the new hires dedicated to serving our community. And Southwest Virginia is back in the game for the Special Olympics basketball competition. Here, our mother explain what the joy of being on the court is like for those athletes. We appreciate your company here tonight at 6. I'm McKinley Struther. We want to get right to your forecast. It was a lot warmer today, certainly not as windy, and hopefully that trend follows us into the work week. Yes, we are going to continue to warm up here, and luckily our winds are going to stay calm. Breezy at times, but nothing compared to what we've dealt with over the past two days. Currently getting a live look to our sky cam in Blacksburg, very similar to what we saw this time yesterday. Just those beautiful clear skies, a nice sunset now, currently sitting at 40 six degrees and again the winds just not causing our temperatures to feel too much colder feeling more like 43 across the rest of the area we are looking at mostly the 40s however Martinsville has currently is currently sitting at 50 degrees in fact here in Roanoke reaching 52 for a high earlier today which is exactly where we should be for this time of year back towards Blacksburg 46 degrees and 43 one of our cooler spots in Hillsville now if you're heading out here for the next few hours temperatures are going to be holding pretty steady here in the mid to lower 40s heading towards 9 p.m. 40 degrees for us and again the winds are going to be calmer satellite and radar showing things are clear we have high pressure nearby and that's going to make for a nice day tomorrow as well we'll talk more about that plus a look at rain chances for this week coming up McKinley all right, Delaney, thank you. Protests have erupted across the world in support of Ukraine, from New York City to Minnesota to Spain and the country at the center of it all. These are images here of a destroyed, or we we'll believe we'll have it at some point in, in, in this video, but here it is, images of a destroyed kindergarten school hit by ammunition shells at the border of Ukraine. And tonight, Vice President Kamala Harris says there is a real possibility of war. Reporter Cole Higgins reports on the international leaders taking charge in this crisis. We are talking about the real possibility of war in Europe. Vice President Kamala Harris reiterating President Biden's warning after meeting with Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky in Germany this weekend. We believe that Putin has made his decision. Period. The U.S. believes Russian forces will attack Ukraine sometime this week. U.S. officials have reported that Russian troops combined with separatist forces deployed in and around Ukraine could now be as high as 190,000. All of this, along with the false flag operations we've seen unfold over the weekend, uh, tells us that the playbook that we laid out uh, is moving forward. While the U.S. doesn't expect Russian President Vladimir Putin to choose diplomacy over war. Until the tanks are actually rolling and the, the planes are flying, uh, we will use every opportunity and every minute we have uh, to see if uh, diplomacy can still uh, dissuade uh, President Putin from carrying this forward. Ukraine still urging the Biden administration not to wait to put sanctions in place against Russia. However, Sunday, Pentagon Press Secretary John Kirby doubling down on the administration's strategy. It's supposed to be a deterrent. If you, if you punish somebody for something they haven't done yet, then they might as well just go ahead and do it. So we're holding that in abeyance, and we're hoping that that could affect the calculus of Mr. Putin. I'm Cole Higgins reporting. Secretary Blinken plans to meet with Russia's foreign minister to discuss de-escalation, but he says it will be canceled if an invasion happens. The streets in Canada's capital city are quiet tonight after police ended the COVID-19 protests there. The Freedom Convoy protested COVID-19 vaccines and mask mandates for weeks that were implemented by the prime minister. On Friday, police began to arrest hundreds of demonstrators in front of the capital. They continued yesterday into this morning until those streets were clear. According to local police, at least 191 people were arrested. This Wednesday, the ex-Marine who led authorities on a nationwide manhunt could learn his fate. Michael Brown is pleading not guilty by reason of insanity to all charges, including first-degree murder of his stepfather, Rodney Brown, back in November of 2019. In court last week, psychiatry experts testified that he met the requirements for an insanity defense based on his reports of depression and blackouts. Brown told them that he could not remember killing his stepfather. It's now up to the judge to determine if he was insane at the time of the murder.
Queen Elizabeth has tested positive for COVID-19. Right now, uh, her team says she only has mild symptoms and plans to do light work at Windsor. Prince Charles and the Duchess of Cornwall both recently tested positive for COVID-19 as well. The Queen recently reached a historic anniversary of 70 years on the throne. The Queen, Charles and the Duchess are all triple vaccinated. The Virginia Special Olympics is just getting started. And when we come back, we'll show you the Southwest Virginia performing team in the basketball games and introduce you to a mom devoted to that competition. Then have you started a small business and you need some help? As mentioned, the city of Roanoke is here to help you. We'll introduce you to those new hires serving our community. Have a question about current events, new laws? We can help. Just ask 10. It's easy. Go to WSLS.com, click on the menu icon, and click Ask 10. Type your question. We'll get to work on your answer. Ask 10 on WSLS.com. Virginia's Special Olympics basketball tournament kicked off today at the Castle Coliseum in Blacksburg. Ten teams competed for their chance to play at the state championships. B.J. Norris, a volunteer for the Special Olympics, tell us they're excited they got the chance to return to the court in person this year. Much it means to our athletes. I mean, I wish we had the 20, 25 teams we normally have for this tournament. Um, but, you know, we've got 10 to 12 out here today, and they're all having a blast. And like I said, there's nothing like the joy that you see in these athletes as they play on this court. Also special this year because it marks the return of what's considered the biggest fundraiser for Special Olympics here in Southwest Virginia, and that is the Polar Plunge. It is set for this Saturday, February 26th at Bissett Park in Radford. We have to take a quick break. We'll be leaving you with a live look from our Virginia Tech Skycam. A beautiful sunset there. Meteorologist Eleni Warden is with us. She'll have your full forecast just after this break. Become a WSLS insider at WSLS.com. Join our family. Get to know us better. And we'll get to know you. And we'll even remember your birthday. Sign up. It's free. Two familiar Roanoke faces are stepping into new roles to help advise small business owners. Tenure's report Alexis Davila tells us why representation matters so much to these new hires. Kat Pascal and Macklin Mosley are the new diverse Roanoke regional advisors with the Small Business Development Centers. Mosley will help local minority entrepreneurs while Pascal assists Latino business owners. The roles are historical first for Roanoke. I have an opportunity to, to be a face that looks like them, to be able to say like, hey, we are here for you, Roanoke is for you, and we want to help you grow your business too because you're a part of Roanoke. There are more than 780,000 small businesses in Virginia, but only 25% of them are owned by racial minorities, according to the U.S. Small Business Administration. With Latinos facing a language barrier, Pascal's bilingual skills can help bridge the gap. I speak Spanish, so being able to communicate with my Hispanic community in our language, I think is able to kind of continue to build that trust and build the excitement in their business. As a graphic designer, Mosley says he is ready to offer free help to any entrepreneur right at their doorstep. I'm here, like, and I'm, I'm in regular clothes, and I'm meeting you where you are. As the owner of two burger restaurants, Pascal is ready to encourage others to reach their full potential. I love sharing my stories. Why? Because I, I want people to connect with me and feel as if I am at the level of just being able to say hi or hola. If you want to seek help from the advisors, head to our website to find out how to do so. In Roanoke, Alexis Davila, 10 News, working for you. Your local weather authority, always watching and tracking for you from the JES Weather Center. The main change today were our calmer winds, and it certainly was a nice change. We saw still a lot of sunshine and temperatures running just a little bit warmer. Satellite and radar very quiet for us. As I mentioned yesterday, we have high pressure that's been moving in. That's causing our calm conditions, also allowing us to warm up, which will continue into tomorrow. Even though winds do have a little bit of a breeze going at times, again, nothing compared to what we were dealing with yesterday. In fact, our strongest sustained wind is now 12 miles per hour here in Roanoke. The rest of us anywhere between about 5 to 10 miles per hour. A live look now to our sky cam overlooking downtown Roanoke. Things are quiet. We are still seeing those clear skies, which will continue as we head into the overnight, which does mean another cold night for us, but not as cold as we started our day off today. So we're mostly looking at 40s across the region here in Roanoke, along with Smith Mountain Lake, 48 degrees. That's also the case for Danville, whereas you're still holding on to the lower 50s and areas like South Boston, 
Austin and Martinsville. Temperatures here are going to be dropping, I would say, into the lower 40s by around 8, 9 p.m. And then we are into the upper 30s right around 10 p.m. So we are going to be chilly out there. Of course, you still don't want to forget that jacket. By tomorrow morning, we are waking up to lows in the 20s rather than the teens and 20s like we saw this morning. So especially those areas west of the parkway where you were a little bit colder. This is going to be a little bit of a nice change, but either way, definitely still staying bundled up tomorrow. 28 degrees in Alta Vista along with Blacksburg right at freezing in Floyd's Floyd and Hillsville. As you're heading out the door in the morning, you want those heated seats going. Defroster definitely a possibility. As for the wipers, you don't have to worry about that. We are going to be staying dry for at least tomorrow. As we go throughout the day, notice our temperatures are going to be running even warmer, reaching into the 60s across much of the region later in the afternoon. Not only that, but seeing more sun. However, we are going to bring in our next frontal boundary heading into the overnight hours tomorrow night and into your Tuesday. We're going to start to see more cloud cover returning as we bring in yet another round of rain. So we're mostly looking at 60s. In fact, 68 in Danville along with South Boston inching very close to the 70s where you're whereas you're holding on to the upper 50s back towards Floyd at 58 degrees. However, then we head throughout the next few days that high pressure system moving on off to our east or bringing in that low pressure system. So this is just going to be the first round of rain that we'll be tracking heading into Tuesday. So just take a look at this seven day forecast. We are going to be staying busy Monday quiet. We if you have time to get outside, enjoy the warm weather. Absolutely do it. Now our temperatures stay in the 60s through about Wednesday, but from there we'll see those temperatures dropping. Rain chances looking pretty good as we go throughout the week. If you don't see any rain Tuesday, still possible later in the week. Temperatures are going to be reaching into the mid 40s, though, by next weekend, finally drying out as well. So I love that forecast because this is my third attempt at my New Year's resolution to okay. uh, do better with my diet. So now I can go outside and run because yes. it is going to be so warm. Oh, it's going to be perfect for that. Oh, yes. I chose the perfect week to start it again. Oh, and if what? I fall off, it's okay. Third time's a charm. That's it. All right. <laughs> working on 10 News at 11 already. And we're going to take a look at the closing ceremony of the Olympics tonight and talk about our favorite moments from the Winter Games games and coming up in sports we've got some college hoops Virginia Tech women on the road at Louisville after the break ahead for us we're on the ground in Ukraine where they're bracing for a possible Russian invasion plus Queen Elizabeth has COVID and helicopters crash hours apart at two popular beaches we've got those stories and more ahead on nightly news then let's take a look at your Olympic medal count the final day, Norway in the overall lead and leading with 15 gold and Team USA in fifth. Well, we hope you have fruits and veggies on your hand because tomorrow is National Grain Free Day. For sure. There is a day for everything. <laughs> there really is. What is this? Now, well, National Grain Free Day was founded in 2019 to raise awareness of the challenges of a restricted diet. Oh, this is on time. I told you I'm starting that diet. Well, there you go. There I go. So I guess I am celebrating. This is perfect. Grains like wheat and corn can agitate people with allergies and autoimmune disorders like celiac disease. You can try nuts, beans, salad, meat, and more to change your diet tomorrow. Hmm. Well, I have all those things in plan. <laughs> so, in plan. That's in plan. So hopefully I'll stick to it. Okay. Yeah, especially well, since I'm encouraged by a holiday. Well, sure. And now everyone at home is going to be like, how's your diet going? How's your diet going? Exactly. On, well, McKinley. there's that. How's the weather looking? <laughs> weather is going to be definitely improving as we head into tomorrow. Still very chilly tonight. We're into the upper 30s right around 10 p.m. So make sure you're still bundled up. In fact, even by tomorrow morning, we're still looking at low temperatures reaching into the 20s for a lot of us. But even right around that freezing mark, in fact, right at freezing in Floyd, along with Hillsville here in Roanoke, just shy of 30 degrees. So, yes, it is still cold. It's winter, but it's not the teens like it's it was not. this morning. <laughs> Your seven day forecast has us in the 60s as we head throughout Wednesday. However, again, you you can get outside tomorrow, but you also have to watch out for those rain chances for really the rest of our work week. Temperatures are going to briefly drop, drop into the 50s Thursday and Friday, eventually into the 40s heading into next weekend. All right, that does it for us here at 10 News at 6. We'll see you back here for the news at 11.